I mean, my name's Adam Winstock. I'm a drug and alcohol psychiatrist, and I've been doing this for about 20 years. And um, you, you've been doing it a lot longer. Yes, I, I'm an analytical toxicologist. So, so my job is to collect and analyse drugs and find out what's in them, find how strong they are, and what the contaminants and diluents are. So let's get cracking with cannabis. What have we got in front of us? Well, we, we've got uh, cannabis resin, and we've got herbal cannabis in, in its various forms, and the paraphernalia associated with its use. The resin is probably the more traditional form of using the drug. I mean, work from the Global Drug Survey basically says people can tell the difference between high potency and the other stuff. This stuff's the stuff that apparently gives people the best high, people are most likely to get dependent and want help. It's also the stuff that gives people the worst effects like memory impairment and paranoia. There's stuff that's even more potent than this sort of natural cannabis now. The new kid on the block, as it were, of course, are the compounds that have come about because of the introduction of what we used to call legal highs, new psychoactive substances. And what, and what do they look like? Can we, um, because my understanding is that the plant material this is in here is pretty inert. It's it's passion flower, it's skull cap, it's it's nothing herb to mania or, 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 or all sorts of things. It, essentially it, it's a herb that, that, that you can smoke. This um, is, is a gram of, of, of cocaine. Okay. Um, you probably wouldn't have dealers that would be uh, kind enough to sell it in nice little um, plastic bottles. Um, no absolutely. What does it look like in a You'd find it on the streets, either in paper wraps like this one. So, so that's what a street deal of a gram would look like. My guess is lots of people are probably looking at that going, that looks like a lot of coke for a gram. Is, is that what a normal street deal is? Of course you don't know when you buy your gram by looking at it, whether it's good, bad. So the, the, the next drug we've got is also a stimulant. Okay. And the effects of all the, the stimulant drugs are, are pretty similar. Um, and, and what we have here is, is amphetamine. The other uh, common amphetamine-like compound is MDMA, right. which we commonly refer to as ecstasy and is, is usually seen in tablet form. So we've got a whole variety of different tablets here that have been collected from festivals this year around the UK. But as potencies and purities got better, Actually, we're seeing an increase in problems. The Global Drug yep. Survey last year saw 1% of last year users turn up to A&E. For young women, that was 2%. Now, the next drug we're going to look at is, is, is LSD, um, and it's a very potent drug. Um, the typical dose is about 80 micrograms, 80, 100, 200 micrograms. The, the, the other uh, hallucinogenic um, drug used in the UK are, are mushrooms. Very sort. We're filming this in March, so there, there are no fresh. And these mushrooms. are pretty ubiquitous around the world. Oh yes, no. they are absolutely, and most of them contain psilocybin. What's that? So what we're going to look at here is ketamine. Okay. Um, not exactly a hallucinogen. We'd call it a dissociative. Wouldn't we? And also used in medicine. Yes, exactly. So the next thing we're going to look at is, is nitrous oxide. And why have you done that after ketamine? What's the is there some similarity? Well, in fact, nitrous oxide is used as an anaesthetic. It was one of the first anaesthetic compounds. Okay. It had poppers. Um, it's just interesting to think why they're called poppers. Yep. Um, this is a, a medicinal product uh, that contains amyl nitride, and it contains a little glass ampule in a cardboard tube with uh, porous ends. The, the ends are very much like cigarette lighter filters. And when you snap it, it pops. 